Welcome back to part two of our SketchUp um, texturing tutorial series. Um, so we're getting stuck straight into it. Here we're showing you how you can use the edit info command to change the source texture file that you use for texturing. So on the left hand side we can see the little image that looks like the texture I've been using for this crapware file. We click on edit and go across to the left where it you can see there's a little button called uh, use texture image so here I'm actually removing that and showing how you can replace it at any stage so again we go into edit and look down there and I'm looking at the brickcrapup.png file so you can find your file names in the browser and see how it actually the brickcrapper file exists there uh, I think now swapping between the two uh, so that's the file there you can always make sure that you're um, use exactly the file you need so you can the power of this is that you can have two different versions of the texture file that you're working with to try different effects um, when you're first starting out on SketchUp it's very confusing and you just don't know about this feature so this is an important feature that I use all the time uh, so here I'm going to go through and I think um, we'll um, change the, the actual texture file so you can see how you can swap between textures. Uh, when you first start you think you have to start from scratch every time. Of course you wouldn't want to do that and um, discover that you, know, you have to redo everything. So here I'm changing to the lit version. So I've got two different file names that I'm able to swap between very quickly. So this is the lit one which is called um, I think Space lit.png whereas the other one doesn't have the space lit.png in the file name so when you're first starting out this will save you a lot of time in uh, testing out different textures and swapping between uh, two uh, and getting very confused so it's, it's quite it's very easy to just go through here so here now, now I'll show you what will happen if you make a mistake so now I'm just pointing at another texture uh, and it's always important to say use a texture image and here's the result. If you make a mistake and your file looks really crazy like this, and you know you've, you've most likely picked the wrong file name. And of course, um, SketchUp uses references of the image all the time. So now we'll skip through and look at uh, looking at the new the new uh, crap crapper. Um, and so we've, we've started off with a blank texture. So now I'm going through and doing that edit info command and selecting the existing brick crapper image. Uh, and showing you how to texture. So this is the image that's been the lesson three. We'll talk about um, Photoshop, how you create an image. But here we're just applying already an image that we've set up. So that's what literally you've, you've seen me just do now. Um, and now I'm going to click texture and position. This is where the magic happens. And we will drag around uh, those little buttons. You can see particularly the green one. Drag that. Hold it and drag it as I'm doing here uh, and you can position the texture exactly how you like so once you have some beautiful textures set up then you can just very carefully do what I'm doing here um, click in the middle of the texture to re reposition it and click on that little green pin to position things and you can drag it to up or down you can rotate it you can do whatever you want so yeah, once, you, once you're shown this, you'll find it very, very easy. And as you'll see me doing, I save every approximately 15 seconds because I'm paranoid. <laughs> and then we, uh, this is the hard way of uh, doing further walls. You just basically use that, that uh, paint can to um, do that. Or the easiest way is to go texture. You fill out that little bucket. Click it again, I'm, I'm having problems here. And you use that little um, eyedropper feature. If you do that, then this SketchUp's smart enough to say, "Well, well, I'm going to then move along the image, so you don't have to resize everything every damn time." And click on that position one. So instead of resizing it, you've basically got a similar sized image, and you just reposition it slightly. I find that saves an awful lot of time. Now I'm using um, the un the fixed pins, the non-fixed pins option where you, um, you right click on that texture and uh, select that option and there you can see how you can very accurately position a, 
a texture. I'm just holding in and dragging them around. Click done. And then you use your eyedropper and click at the bottom of here. And you see how quick that is? It's, a, it's smart enough to know that I, it wants to use the next part of the texture below um, the existing texture. So this will save you a lot of time rather than struggling and re repositioning textures every time. So here I'm starting to work fairly quick here, dragging the pins around to get this door up and running. And you can see, when you first start off, it does you do spend quite a lot of time, or I did anyway, resizing things. But then once you learn this little eyedropper tool, it just saves so much time. So you can have it can be quite smart with textures, even though you've got a, a particular door shape, you can enlarge it just so you can just see those hinges on the left. And again, you save it constantly. This is a little, this is a small file, but it's a little bit complicated. We've got inner and outer uh, walls. Here's, let's have a look what we're doing here. So just being smart here and just dragging textures around to make them look reasonably um, consistent with the other wall. And you can even compare it to the outside of the brick wall and get that just online. I'd be doing that normally, but I can't be bothered in this quick version. So here you can see, um, what am I doing here? I'm trying to making, okay, we'll do the toilet thing. And so we just drag around to a totally different area here to get the um, rather unpleasant spots, which of course were not sampled from my own toilet. They're just fake splatter textures that I've got on, which I'll cover in the next tutorial. Here we're using the, the uh, unfixed pins option to carefully place that texture. I find that the best way to, to be very accurate if you've got a, you know, a nicely proportioned texture. See how quickly I did that one there. I'm using the um, uh, that little eyedropper tool again to quickly copy a very consistent image. When I first used SketchUp, it took me ages to texture these little circular um, spherical areas because I had to resize everything, every single uh, thing. So if you've got 20 different surfaces. So yeah, you can see how quickly I'm operating now. You're able to cover a lot of area very quickly if you use the eyedropper tool. It doesn't matter what you do, you still end up having to revisit things. So the eyedropper's working, but it's actually not copying exactly all the way. It's, it's thinking that I'm wanting to move on and, and creating errors. So you, you just have to quickly review it. And there, so there you can see I've got problems here with the, uh, some of the clear items. Here's what you can do when you mega, you zoom right out and use huge textures the same size texture but you're, you're um, was it, projecting it from a very long distance so you can save an awful lot of time here as long as your texture doesn't have any lit, lit areas that will confuse things at night time. If you're confident that that texture is going to always look that way at day or night you, know, you can zoom right out and save a lot of time. So here we're just doing the roof up here, positioning it. And uh, yeah, I was getting frustrated, so then I unclicked that fixed pins option and quite pleased with that pretty authentic look there. Now I want to do the inside of the toilet, but because the way SketchUp is, you have to actually create another um, wall. So I'm just using the, um, what is it, the drag button or whatever it's called to create another wall, which I can texture that's separate to the outer wall. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just getting the nasty poo colours in here to make the interior and then I always check the exterior to see what I want when I have to if I'm doing the wrong while I actually create um, I'll stuff up the outside textures here I'm creating after I've done the second wall I have to replace the first wall just quickly with a couple of simple drawing clicks to be consistent see that's covered that so now unfortunately I then have to um, make the next texture simply by using the eyedropper from the bottom texture bring it up so I've done the opposite to what I did earlier and now we're doing the back one we don't want a brick wall on the inside it's not effective enough so I basically copied that left texture to the right it comes up to the same right zoom level and then we just drag around a bit 
and tweak it and get it looking right. And there, the eyedropper works well there, so even the bricks, the brick or the lines are uh, lining up perfectly. So this saves you a lot of time. So I'm actually showing you all the stuff I've learned over the last, oh, I don't know how long I've been doing this now, six or seven months. Once you've saved your um, SketchUp file, then you export it to X-Plane version 8 using the X-Plane um, plugin. And you just check that it's using the brick crapper file, the file that you've been um, texturing. If it does, if it says another file or does says multiple files, then you've accidentally used multiple texture files, and you will do that. I guarantee. I'm not going to mistake. I certainly did quite a lot. And now I'm just checking in the um, source directory the um, the object file that's now been exported, and here it is. Looks messy, but it shows that it's got the brick brick crapper PNG file. And at the bottom it shows it's been exported using Marginals plugin, I think. And then you can then go into your texture file, the Brick Crapper file, and you can see how it all ties together. That's the file we've been using and, 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 has to, and of course that file has to be in the order of two, so it's 1024 by 1024. Getting into um, Overlay edit Editor now, where we insert these new objects into the X-Plane scenery. So I'm just selecting my KM, KMMH version 8 dummy directory that I've been using to do these demos. It like, takes a lot longer to load up. I'm just cheating here and cut the video. So here's our existing toilet, the brick crapper that was in the original scenery, looking all lonesome. And on the right hand side are all the objects that are available to be loaded because we've exported it in X-Plane in uh, SketchUp. It's there. So this is the new object. Whoops, so obviously I've got two objects in this object file and so it's exported it. There's two objects. Normally I just have the one toilet. A bit over catering here for uh, uh, aviation people. And this is what it looks like after you've exported. And I'll just show you the X-Plane expert excerpt now. So here we are with X-Plane launched and just giving a quick tour so you see these objects, how they look in X-Plane. Uh, it's important to always verify what they look like in X-Plane compared to Overlay Editor. It's amazing what little things can go wrong and look, look strange when you're actually in the environment. So yeah, I get a real buzz when you uh, create an object and you can actually walk around it in X-Plane and see what you've created. What a messy little thing I've done. <laughs> I've gone over at the top with some of the effects here. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, you can see the difference between my quickly done file and the file we originally did. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and uh, look forward to the next one to cover uh, Photoshop more specifically.